Hello, everyone, and welcome back for another episode of the Market Bites podcast. I'm joined today by our global market strategist, Ben Laidler. Ben, how are you? Yeah, good. I'm going to do my best uh, Josh Gilbert impression today. Yeah, well, he he's living the dream with the Australian rugby team. I think they've got an open training session and he, he's there. I don't think he's quite trying out for them. Um, I don't think that would go too well. But uh, he the pictures is... of tackle practice would be interesting. Yes, no, I would want to see that. I would want to see that. Um, just a quick message for for those listening or watching. Feel free to like, share, subscribe. Uh, if you're on the the podcast platforms, feel free to give us a rating as well. Good, of course. Uh, and Ben and I would will do our best today to to live up to that potential rating. Topics wise, Ben, we're going to go for uh, the quarter one earnings this week. We'll talk a little bit about those. We've got the global PMIs as well, and there's been quite a lot of UK data that's out or coming out this week so we can have a bit of a, a uk update as well yeah busy as ever right i mean this sort of reversal rally of the losers of last year has just really been hanging in there uh, earnings as you say you know it's the next big test those forward-looking pmis you know is a real interesting health check on the on the world economy and uh, and don't get me started on the uk yeah, it's a busy week. It's a busy week. Even the four-day week last week had a lot on. Uh, so first up then for us today, quarter one earnings. Firstly, how are you feeling so far about the ones we've already had? Obviously, we've just started with the banks, but how have they been received? Secondly, what names are you looking out for this week? Uh, and from those, is there anything in particular you'd be, be keeping an eye on? Yeah, so early days, but definitely been a decent start. Um, you know, 80% of the S&P 500 that's reported so far has beaten expectations uh, and earnings are, you know, down 3%. Uh, it doesn't sound great, but, um, you know, I think we're on track for another sort of less bad and resilient earnings season. Uh, and this has been helped, I think, by three things. You know, we had, you know, over 2% US GDP growth in the first quarter. So, you know, not bad. Um, we've had very low earnings expectations with big forecast cuts coming into this earnings season. And, you know, 40% of U.S. earnings come from the rest of the world. And that's where we've seen so this sort of decent recovery with China reopening and, and you know, natural gas prices plunging in, in Europe. So that's been the sort of setup. Um, you know, banks has been the particular focus, um, you know, at least from the get go. You know, big banks really benefited from these higher interest rates. Um, this sort of flight to quality with the bank scare in March. Uh, and we've seen no sort of no new problems, if you like, through through the earnings season. That's sort of been a relief, you know, but, and it's a big but, you know, all of them, you know, even the strongest like JP Morgan are seeing deposit outflows, you know, attracted by these sort of higher interest rates that you can get in sort of money market funds. And, and this is going to have macro consequences, I think. It will eventually slow bank lending, uh, and therefore, it'll contribute to this sort of slowing of the economy, which will effectively do, you know, some of the Fed's, uh, you know, work for it. Um, with the largest banks now basically, you know, done, the focus is going to shift, I think, to, you know, the bigger consumer and tech names. Uh, we saw a bit of a mixed Netflix report out, you know, overnight. You know, OK, subscriber growth. But, you know, the jury, I think, still out on its sort of crackdown on password sharing and the success of its new sort of ad supported uh, tier rollout. Uh, we have net. We have, sorry, with Tesla after the close today. Um, expectations, I think, are pretty cautious, which I'm I'm happy with. Yes. Uh, we've obviously seen the production report. Uh, the focus is going to be on the impact on its you know very high profit margins of this just sway the price cuts that we've um, that, that we've seen uh, that, them introduce uh, this year. Uh, and this is all a prelude, I think, to next week, where you know we've got. Some of the really big consumer brands like Coke, like McDonald's. Uh, we've got the you know the sort of tech titans, Microsoft and, and Google. Um, and and this is you know I think important from a macro context, right? Remember, consumer is seventy percent of the U.S. economy. Has been key to its resilience so far. So that'll be a real check in. And then you know tech dominates the U.S. stock market, right? And it's performed well this year uh, to the extent U.S. equities are up this year. It's because tech's up this year. Um, and again expectations pretty low um we've seen sort of earnings declines um and i think those are pretty well you know telegraphed so i think that's the sort of set up for you know a, a pretty big next week yeah for sure i was just looking at a, a list of the s p 500 uh companies on finviz which i'm sure is a website a lot of people use where it's got the the map the bigger the rectangle 
Uh, well, those squares, rectangles, uh, the bigger the rectangle, the uh, the bigger the weighting and some of the dates, which I'm sure people will be aware of or should be aware of. You've got Microsoft on the 25th of April, Amazon, the 27th, as you mentioned, Tesla uh, is today. Meta, the 26th, Coke, the 24th, PepsiCo, the 25th, there, Exxon, April the 28th uh, and Chevron the 28th there as well. But all can be found on this website. It's just quite interesting just to see. Uh, how you uh, can sort of piece your day and week together based off of these earnings, regardless of what you're trading. Of course, talking about some of the big tech companies there, the NASDAQ, of course, can be most influenced by them. I saw a stat yesterday, uh, which I thought was really interesting, and it was about Apple. And I'm just going to have to find it quickly before, yeah, here we go. So if the year ended today, Apple's 7.1% weighting in the S&P 500 would be the largest for any single company in the index with data going back to 1980, which is pretty remarkable. So uh, the biggest weighting ever or since 1980. Uh, second subject for us today is the global PMIs. I, I guess for some people, they'll be asking, right, what are they? Why are they important? You know, what do they show us? Uh, we can also, I suppose, at this point, talk about Chinese GDP data, which came out yesterday or Tuesday, depending when people are listening to this. Uh, I imagine all these these data points help paint a picture uh, of the current economic situation in the world. So with all of that said, how are you seeing it? Yeah, so, you know, the macro story this year has been one of, you know, relief that we're not in recession um, because, you know, the US consumer stayed resilient, you know, China's reopened. We've had this 80% natural gas plunge in Europe, which has really helped there. Uh, but the risks are still sort of uncomfortably high. Uh, we're still waiting for the sort of lagged impact of these uh, you know, dramatic hikes in interest rates. Uh, and now we're going to see, I think, the banks sort of tighten up on, on, on lending. So this all makes these sort of forward-looking PMI surveys you know, really important. Uh, they give us a sort of key pulse check on uh, not only the economic growth outlook, but also the crucially the inflation outlook um, and the way to look at them is you know anything above 50 means that you know we're still expanding you know inflation's still rising growth is still strong you know anything below 50 you know inflation's falling and and, and growth is falling um so you know on the growth side i think we're looking for some sort of stabilization um of the sort of low the slow fall in growth expectations so something in the sort of low to mid 50s uh, we're getting at numbers from across the world, from the US, Europe, UK, Japan, Australia. So really, you know, the biggest economies, you know, in the world. Uh, but hopefully we're also going to see a sort of slowdown in inflation pressure. Um, and this will allow, you know, hopefully central banks to stop raising interest rates, um, which has been you know, a key driver of, of, of markets, um, you know, so far. Um, you mentioned China, you know, China's sort of the, the, the big global outlier here, right? Second biggest economy in the world. So it really matters, but it has very little inflation. Uh, and its economy is, is expanding strongly rather than slowing, which is what we're seeing, you know, everywhere else in the world. Uh, we just saw some really strong first quarter GDP numbers, you know, four and a half percent growth, you know, out of China, big acceleration, near 11 percent growth in retail sales, which is our sort of proxy for uh, the recovering, uh, you know, Chinese um, consumer. Um, and this is really important for a couple of reasons. So one, um, it's a, probably the biggest insurance policy we have. There's not going to be a global recession. Um, you know, if China is expanding at this sort of rate, it's basically mathematically impossible for the world to, to have a recession. Uh, and it's also a, you know, a big sort of bright spot for all these global companies that where China is a, is a really big market. So, you know, think the luxury giants like, you know, LVMH, um, you know, commodity players like Anglo-American, you know, RTZ, uh, and also some of these big economies that are particularly focused on China. Um, you know, Australia, you know, classic one, but also, you know, places like Germany. So, you know, it's, it's a big deal for everybody. Yeah, and I guess uh, just speaking about LVMH there, as you mentioned, one thing that you don't usually see in a recession is their share price and Ferrari's share price on all time highs. Uh, it's not something I, I think too many people will be accustomed to actually Ferrari making that new all time high. Uh, last week, taking out the high that we saw from January 2022. And speaking of January 2022, the VIX closed uh, below 17 yesterday for the first time since then, which is pretty remarkable. Whether that's the calm before the storm or not, we'll have to wait 
and see our final subject today is going to focus on the uk so this week we have a lot of data to get through wednesday i.e today we had the inflation number out and then on friday we've got the retail sum sales number and the flash pmi number which we just talked about and touched upon so i guess more for this section we can focus on that inflation and retail sales number the inflation figure coming out at 7 a.m this morning i hope you uh up early for that then uh for our listeners here uh so with that what's the early take and then how do you feel about the uk at the moment i mean cable is on a multi-month high i think it's june yeah. or july last summer we're trading at levels there and the FTSE is pretty much at its all-time high soon so is everything as good as it seems <laughs> So the UK is basically the sort of ugly duckling of the global economy, right? Um, it's got one of the sort of weaker economies. It's been skirting recession. Uh, you know, the IMF, you know, only last week, you know, came out saying that, you know, the UK is going to plunge into recession and be the weakest major economy. Uh, and then on the inflation side, we're basically the only major economy in the world with inflation is still stuck above 10%, which is where it's been since uh, July last year. And, and just by comparison, right, the US is now down at five, even Europe's you know, down at seven. Um, and, um, you know, I hate to report, but we just had another disappointing inflation number, right? We thought this was going to be the month we were going to go below 10%. It didn't happen. In fact, prices were up 0.8% um, in just a month. Uh, we're still over 10%. Um, and, you know, this is going to continue to, you know, pile the pressure on the already hard-pressed UK consumer. Um, and I think it also makes just a further 12th Bank of England rate hike uh, on May the 11th, you know, I think increasingly inevitable, unfortunately. Uh, but uh, as you say, you know, economies are not are not asset markets. Uh, the pound's been basically the best performing major currency in the world this year. Uh, it's up, you know, a couple of percent versus the dollar. Um, and this outlook now, I think, for sort of, you know, high for longer interest rates, at least for a bit more, will, um, I think, will continue to support it. And then also the FTSE 100, you know, very resilient. It's up, you know, 6% this year. Um, and, and this is building on um, the fact that it was the, the least worst performing, let's put it that way, you know, you know, major market in the world last year. Yeah, it's pretty remarkable, isn't it? When you, you see a stock market that's all-time high, and I guess if you're new to markets, people will be thinking out, oh, well, everything's rosy over there. It's not always the case at all. All oh, the FTSE very close to its all time high, as is the DAX. Actually, I was just going to bring that up for myself just to look, just to confirm that I believe it's, it's very close uh, to reaching its all time high. Just give me one second at home. Yeah, not far at all. I mean, a good week and it can easily get back above that 16,300, just currently trading at 15.84 now. Uh, ben, as usual, thank you very much for, for stepping in. It's a busy week. Uh, we'll be back together on Monday for the uh, the webinar for our club members. Um, but we've had a really nice run of positive weeks for the S&P. I think we're, you know, currently sitting after Don't last week. Sam. Yeah, well, one, two, three, four, five positive weeks in a row we had. And we're very close to where we opened at the moment. But, I mean, if we make six, you've really got to scroll a long way to get six in a row from the S&P. So maybe a little breather is due. But uh, Ben, thank you as always. Yeah, thanks everyone. Trade safe. Take care, guys.